Welcome to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection since 1991. And I'm Linda Karnowskis, and I want to thank you for joining us on this Friday, October 7th. We have an informative show for you today. First, we'll be visiting with Tim Penny from the Southern Minnesota Initiative Foundation, and we're going to hear all about their 30-year celebration, and then some. And then we'll be getting an update later on in the program from the United Way of Steele County, and we'll be visiting with Julie Anderson from Trans Transitional Housing, and we'll be uh, visiting with Marcy Sundin from the uh, Blooming Prairie Boys and Girls Club. So you'll want to stay tuned. It's that special day in the week, Friday, when we uh, recognize our sponsors of the Oatana Today Show. The Oatana Today Show thanks the following sponsors of this program. Our premier sponsors are City of Oatana, Express Employment Professionals, and Oatana Public Utilities. Our primary sponsors are Amy Swain Hearing Centers, Anytime Fitness, Bev Cashman for Minnesota State Representative, District 24A, and Fairway Foods, Little Theater of Oatana, Oatana Foundation, United Way of Steel County. Our interlude sponsors are Bremer Bank, Brenda Bednar Mortgage Office, Cedar Valley Services, Glenn Mager and Michael Mager of the Brickmaker Funeral Home and Medford Funeral Home, Carlson Branstead and Company CPAs, ERA Gillespie Real Estate, Fairview Animal Medical Center, Horizon Eye Care, Owatonna Business Incubator, SignPro and Auto Trim Design, Steel County Historical Society, Steel County Transitional Housing, The Third Hand Video Productions, Tri-M Graphics, and TPS Insurance. And we hope you will support these fine Owatonna businesses that support the Oatana Today Show. Without them, the show couldn't continue. And if you are interested or, or a business and you're looking to be a sponsor of the show, uh, you can do so by uh, contacting Leanne Alt at 390-5751. Leanne would love to hear from you. We will take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back with the uh, Southern Minnesota Initiative Foundation. So please stay with us. United Way of Steel County has kicked off the 2016 campaign. This year's corporate campaign leader is Go for Sport. Our goal is $700,000. Be part of the change you want to see in the community. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Hi, I'm Brenda with the mortgage office of Brenda Bednar, aligned with American Mortgage and Equity Consultants, where closings feel right, right from the beginning. I'm a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. Oatana Public Utilities, real people, real reliable, real progress. Making life a little easier day after day. Taking pride in our community, listening to what you say. A voice you can talk to. We're growing with you. Greetings from the Steele County Historical Society. We invite you to visit us and enjoy your county's history at the History Center and Village of Yesteryear. Check our website for current exhibits and monthly programs. Welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection. And we're going to be here visiting with Tim Penny, and it's always good to have you on the program, Tim. Yeah. Welcome. Always good to be with you. Thanks. You're a busy fellow. <laughs> uh, we've got a lot going on at the foundation. You sure have. Why don't you share a little bit about yourself with our, our viewers? Tell oh, me. yeah. Well, I've been with the uh, Southern Minnesota Initiative Foundation now eight years. It's a small foundation uh, here in South Central, Southeastern Minnesota, and uh, we were established during the farm crisis some many years ago, three decades ago. Uh, and uh, the McKnight Foundation uh, helped create this rural foundation as well as five other rural foundations to cover the 80 non-metro counties in Minnesota. Um, but they, they created each foundation to be independent and autonomous so that they could respond to the needs and the opportunities in their own region. So we're basically, I say, an economic development foundation. And um, we do three things. We invest in uh, small town community funds to help small towns in our region create and maintain community funds for their own benefit. Uh, we invest an awful lot in early childhood activity uh, every year because the needs there are great and uh, it's all about getting kids off to a better start so they succeed thereafter. Uh, and then we invest a lot in entrepreneurship and business startups. So those are the three niche areas for our foundation and um, it keeps us busy. 
I heard you say that it, basically the catalyst for the Southern Minnesota Initiative Foundation was the farming crisis. Yeah. Could you just shed a little light? Well, I, was, I represented this area in Congress at that time, and, mm -hmm. and as is often the case, government was a day late and a dollar short responding to that crisis. Uh, we finally did pass uh, after many uh, months and months of uh, uh, debate and effort, uh, a farm debt restructuring law which helped save many, many farms uh, here in Minnesota and across the upper Midwest. Um, but that farm crisis uh, was really taking a toll not only on uh, the farming population but on our small towns all across rural Minnesota. And that's why the McKnight Foundation, uh, which is one to this day is one of Minnesota's largest family foundations, uh, took an interest in trying to help rural Minnesota. But because they're a metro-based foundation, they sort of understood that they didn't really know a lot about rural. And so they wisely at that time uh, created these foundations um, ours included, to be mm -hmm. independent foundations. Uh, they seeded each foundation with an initial grant, and every year for the past 30 years, they've provided about 20% of our annual budget, uh, roughly mm -hmm. a $1 million donation each year, uh, which we can then use uh, to leverage other donations and other activity within our region. Um, so it's, it's all been about uh, creating a foundation with a regional focus to help um, within that region to invest in programs, projects, activities uh, that add to the vitality of the region. And so for me it's an affair of the heart because this region uh, is essentially, I, my family goes back like six generations in this part of Minnesota, uh, but having represented this same area in Congress for a number of years, uh, now I have the opportunity to lead an organization that's uh, focused on the future of this corner of the state. So the initiative was a huge success in helping Pull that farming crisis, pulling these. Well, we were through. a player. I mean, we can't right. say that we were the be all in the end all, but we we were able over the years to provide investments that would, uh, like the business investments. Mm -hmm. uh, we we've done um, um, hundreds of business mm -hmm. loans over the last thirty years. Um, in all, we have expended about a hundred million right. dollars. Uh, into the region. We raise maybe 10% of our budget locally from counties, cities, corporations, mm -hmm. banks, individuals, but we're bringing in 90% of our resources every year to yeah. invest in activities that uh, help this region grow. When you saw the niche that it filled back yeah. in that crisis. Has it expanded now to these other areas? Yeah, Since well, it's, it has morphed over time because mm -hmm. uh, the, the needs 30 years ago are not exactly the same needs as today. And in the last several years, we really have tightened our focus around entrepreneurial activity, early childhood activity, and then uh, this uh, small town community fund work. Uh, because those are three areas where we think we can be a helpful complement, a helpful supplement to what others are doing. Uh, and I think our resources can be, you know, very well leveraged in those three areas. How is the Southern Minnesota Initiative Foundation funded? Well, in addition to the McKnight dollars, which, uh, um, as I said, annually it's roughly a million dollars that uh, we are uh, allocated by the McKnight Foundation, uh, we have about a million dollars each year that we can take off of our own endowment fund, uh, an endowment fund of over $30 million today. Um, we also have... Um, a revolving loan fund for some of our lending activities. So as those dollars are repaid, we have uh, dollars that we can put out the door, and that's roughly a million dollars uh, annually. Uh, we do have a very small amount of uh, money in uh, government support. Uh, we have um, an SBA lending program. Those are uh, small business enterprise loans. Uh, and we also have a partnership with the AmeriCorps program where we hire uh, 20 AmeriCorps personnel every year. Typically they're young people right out of college mm -hmm. uh, that are looking for a public service opportunity. And we place these AmeriCorps personnel into early childhood sites in southern Minnesota. So that becomes part of our early childhood work. Um, and then, as I said, we do raise uh, roughly a half a million dollars every year from local donations uh, from corporations, banks, individuals. Pardon me, individuals, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you add it all up, it okay. gets to about a five million dollar annual budget, and uh, again, keeps us busy. Now you're celebrating 30 years, and we'll, we'll, uh, the foundation is. But let's um, talk a little bit about the fall. What your fall yeah. focus is? Well, in the fall, we have it's a it's a busy time. Not that there's any time of year that isn't busy for us, but we we have uh, three major events that we. Uh, 
uh, host or co-host every fall. Uh, one was just a couple weeks ago on September 20th, an all-day event in Austin, Minnesota at the historic Hormel home. It was our third annual Entrepreneur Bridge event. And at this event, it's an all-day kind of training seminar for smaller businesses in our region that are really trying to enhance their growth potential. So all day long we have guest speakers, uh, Ross Bernstein, who's the author of all these uh, uh, sports books about how do you succeed. Well, he, he tailored his speech to this audience to, to, to help make that message relevant to how do you lead a business and how do you succeed in business. And uh, so it was a great day to start, uh, a great way to start the day. Uh, but then we had uh, other speakers and panels throughout the day to focus on other business needs. And we concluded the day with an entrepreneur competition uh, that included seven um, entrepreneurs from college campuses in southern Minnesota mm -hmm. because many of our campuses now have entrepreneur coursework mm -hmm. where students try to create a business. So we did a judging and we gave a couple awards to these business, uh, to these uh, student businesses. So that was the Entrepreneur Bridge event and that'll be every September um, going forward. This was our third event on September 20th. Uh, the next event that we have coming up and it's right here in Otana is on October 29th, uh, all day Saturday. It's the annual Early Childhood Care Conference. Mm -hmm. And this is um, designed to provide uh, resources and seminars and breakout groups for early childhood providers all across southern Minnesota. We'll have about 400 early childhood providers at this event. Uh, it's about kindergarten readiness training. Uh, it's about um, uh, breakout groups that deal with social and emotional challenges that young kids might have. Uh, and it also helps uh, these early child care providers um, get their annual certification, the, the, the credits or the continuing education that they need. So that's the second big event and there's still time to register for that if you'd like to attend. And the third is on December 3rd, which is our annual local foods festival. Okay. We call it the Feast Festival and we have about 100 local food producers uh, come to this event every year. It's open to the public. We had 1,500 people attend last year. It'll be at the Rochester Civic Center. Okay. And um, it's kind of like a farmer's market on steroids, but it's nicely sandwiched between <laughs> Thanksgiving and Christmas, so you can come and shop, okay. buy things for the Christmas holidays. Quickly, we're running out of time. Uh, are we, we already? Cover the celebration, oh, the so why don't you just give all the information on the celebration? Okay, this is, this, this is airing <laughs> on Friday, so on uh, Wednesday next week, October 12th, uh, we have our annual uh, conference or our annual luncheon, uh, but it's our 30th anniversary celebration. And so at the event, uh, Neil Cuthbert, the vice president at McKnight, will give the luncheon speech talking about the history of not only our foundation, but the other five rural initiative foundations. We will also announce our One Big Thing grant. Uh, and this year we're, we're uh, dedicating uh, upwards of $300,000 in uh, sizable grants to the 26 small town communities for whom we've helped create community funds and to the 23 communities where we've done extensive strategic planning around early childhood needs. And then later in the afternoon after the luncheon uh, at the Arts Center uh, here in West Hills, we're going to have an open house from 4.30 to 6.30 so that the general public can come in and learn more about our foundation and help us celebrate our 30th birthday. And again, where and when and what date? Oh, the uh, October 12th. The okay. luncheon is at the Holiday Inn. And then later in the afternoon, the Arts Center is the location for the open house. Okay. It's always a pleasure to have you, Tim. You're always a fount of information. And, and it just... goes quickly every time, doesn't it? <laughs> yep. We appreciate all you do. We will take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back, so please stay with us. Hi, I'm Bev Cashman. I'm running for the House of Representatives in District 24A. Good government works when all legislators agree to listen to each other, to work together, and compromise to serve the best interests of their constituents. I will do that. As a legislator, my goal will be to help resolve difficult issues rather than simply blame the other party for failing to act. Please vote for me, Bev Cashman, on November 8th. Hi, this is Eric with the West Hills Tennis and Fitness Center. A heated swimming pool, sauna, running track, cardio room, basketball court, weight room, and six tennis courts are among the amenities you can enjoy at our facility. We have a variety of membership packages available to meet the needs of everyone, or you can simply drop in for the day. Stop out today and take advantage of all we have to offer. West Hills Tennis and Fitness, encouraging and promoting a healthy lifestyle.
Hello, I'm Glenn Mager. And I'm Michael Mager with the Brick Mager Funeral Home and the Medford Funeral Home. At Brick Mager, we are privileged to have served the families of Steele County community for 118 years. Whether you choose traditional burial or cremation, we promise the tribute your loved one deserves with the peace of mind that you require. We are proud to be part of the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, this is Barry Gillespie, president of ERA Gillespie Real Estate, where our pledge is to save you money, save you time, and simplify your life. And we're proud supporters of the Oatana Today Show. I'm Betsy Linger from the Owatonna Foundation. Your generosity has made Owatonna a better place to live by benefiting our community, the arts, recreation, and education. Please consider a donation today. The Owatonna Foundation is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection. And we're here visiting, getting an update about the United Way of Steele County. And we're visiting with um, Julie Anderson and Marcy Sundin. How are you doing? And you're with the Boys and Girls Club of Blooming Prairie? Correct. correct? Okay. Well, first of all, why don't you share just a little bit about yourself, Julie, with our viewers. Absolutely. And what you do here in Owatonna. Well, thank you for having us back. <laughs> uh, I'm Julie Anderson with Transitional Housing. And I've been the director there since 2009. And it's the greatest job in the world because we get to hear thank you every day from people from all walks of life. And we work primarily with people who are homeless, but we also work with people who are at risk for becoming homeless by providing apartment rental subsidies and case management. Okay. And we're very excited to gear up again for the United Way. Uh, the campaign is well underway, and we are very proud to partner with the United Way. We couldn't do our work without them. Okay. Marcy, you're, uh, this is your first time on the program, it, it is, is. isn't it? Well, welcome to the Oatana Today Show. Why don't you share a little bit what your title is and what it is you do with the Boys and Girls Club in uh, Blooming. Thanks for having me this morning. Um, so I'm the unit director in Blooming Prairie, and we are open to the public, to all communities in Steele County, uh, actually in Mauer County as well, Dodge County. We have kids from uh, Ellendale, Brownsdale, primarily Blooming Prairie, but we are open to anyone who needs us. Okay. So any place for kids to go that they need a safe place. Tell people who may not know, what is the Boys and Girls Club? So the Boys and Girls Club is a safe place for kids to be. So we have two rules. We have fun and we're safe. Um, so we operate after school hours. The bus from Blooming brings the kids from 3 to 6. So they drop them off at 3, we're open till 6 o'clock. And um, we just provide, when the kids get there, we have a snack. And then after that, we provide homework help. And we do a lot of spelling tests so that everyone successfully passes their spelling tests on Friday. And um, from there, we teach life goals, um, all sorts of fun programs, Money Matters. Um, and that continues all the way through the whole school year. And then our summer hours are different. We're open 7.30 to 5.30. Okay. And what are the age groups that you welcome? We welcome anyone school age, so kindergarten through 12th grade. All right. And how many staff do you have on site? We have eight staff currently. Wow. And how many students t uh, participate in the program? This summer we had 97 students. Right. So currently um, some families fluctuate and go kind of by month by month. So we have mm -hmm. some that now are starting being that this is the first week of October. We'll have some more starting this week. So, And, and, and through the years, Boys and Girl Club, it, it has taken on many different, um, many different functions. Uh, is there a, and you, it sounds like here that you do more of the education side. Do you have we do. sport programs or anything like that? We do. We do have sporting programs. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of transportation. We don't have a bus or a van or anything, so we can't compete with neighboring towns or neighboring clubs, I should say. So our Rochester Boys and Girls Club, they can compete. They drive to Red Wing or Northern Minnesota and they compete with okay. the other clubs, which is a great time too. Do you have a gym on site or an area for <clears throat> games? Or? We have a games room that we um, use as a gym. It has very tall ceilings, uh, but we do a lot of outside activity. 
This fall we'll be, do, we'll be doing fall cleanup for anyone that signs up and needs our help. Um, so the kids get exercise for that. This summer we did a walking program. We went to the swimming pool two days a week. So. Okay. And how is your program funded? We are funded um, by grants. The United Way plays a huge part into what we do, thank goodness, because we would be lost without them. Um, we also have two big fundraisers every year. One is in February, and it's in Blooming Prairie at the Servicemen's Club. It's called Benefit Bash. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other one is in June, and that's also at the Servicemen's Club in Blooming. It's called Rib Fest. Mm -hmm. Could you share with us, what is the report card that comes out from the United Way? Well, every year, uh, the United Way is very specific about the types of services that are provided in Blooming Prairie, Medford, Ellendale, Owatonna as well. And they are broken down in terms of the numbers of people served. So this year, there were some wonderful outcomes in all of our communities. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you can get that by mail or through your corporate office where you work. But it's just a very detailed listing of the numbers of people who, for example, receive transitional housing services and were housed and no longer homeless, the number of kids who receive services through Boys and Girls Club. Uh, and the numbers are outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, just about everybody in some way has been touched by United Way. What is the purpose of that going out? The purpose is really for people to see that the results are there and that the results are local, that the money stays here in Steele County. Every dollar makes a difference and it translates into great services for people in need. And not just for basic, basic needs like housing, but for enrichment pro programs, for example, that help kids stay on track, nutrition programs, um, working with people who are uh, senior citizens. So it's a very, very inclusive program. And this year the goal is $700,000 and we know that we can beat that goal with everybody working together. This consolidated fundraising effort allows the nonprofit agencies to focus on their missions rather than spending all of their time fundraising so that we can focus on people who need housing, we can focus on kids who need after school programs. And you've come today and you're two of the, there's how many programs that United Way does? Currently, there are, I believe, like 16, 17 programs, so we can get the exact number for okay. you. But what, what's really great about it is that the focus isn't just on the agencies, but that the focus is on the programs that the agencies run and on really problem solving, community mm -hmm. impact, looking at the problem and then identifying the problem and then going after that problem as opposed to simply funding everybody who applies. So it's a very program-focused okay. agency. And you're two of those. We're two directors. I mean, you're but unit you're, director from your right, agency. Right. And and then I'm, I'm in a smaller agency that's more regional in, in Steele County, uh, but my I'm the executive director. But yeah, kind of same type of work that we do, right. you know, working and with the, programs. The United Way, there, you're two of 24 programs? 24, yep. There 24, 24 programs, programs that are helped yep. by the funding that tr comes through the United Way. Correct. I mean, obviously they can't do it 100%, but they, do, they are a big help. Definitely. And, uh, one of the questions I would have for you, Marcy, is, uh, you mentioned that um, there's not transportation. Would transportation be something in the future if the funding, if people really got behind the Boys and Girls Club and helped support in addition to what the United Way does? Absolutely. That would be wonderful. We mm -hmm. could, uh, not that we don't like to walk everywhere we go, because we, we definitely get our exercise and we're everywhere around blooming. Uh, but it would be nice to participate in other things that, you know, Owatonna may be having and um, there are there were some opportunities of a twins game and things of that nature that that we weren't able to do because we don't have busing. Mm -hmm. We do have lots of community members that donate as well. Um, we were able to go to a Bruins game in Austin last year because oh. we had a, a big donor that donated busing for us. So that was fantastic. But yes, transportation would make things a lot easier. Right. So the more we give to the United Way, the more is, can be given to these very important mm -hmm. programs. More people we can help. Right. Mm -hmm. Julie, let's talk a little bit about the in transitional housing, the um, eviction. Yes. Uh, uh, prevention. Prevention. The mm -hmm. eviction prevention program is an outstanding program because it addresses homelessness before it starts. So if a family were to call our agency and say, I've just received an eviction notice, I've only got a few days before I need to be out, what do I do? We can help them stay on track and help them get over that one month hump, that problem that they're dealing with, so that they can stay housed, so we can provide one-time assistance, and that money goes directly to the landlord. So let's say your car broke down and you needed to spend a little bit on car repairs so you could get to your job at a local company. Uh, you end up behind in your rent because you paid for that car repair. 
we can help you with your rent for that month. And what it does is it stops that cycle from starting, that cycle of homelessness from starting. Is that because everything's connected? It's all in your, connected, in your it, budget. very much, and it, it's very much a snowball effect. You know, if, if if you lose your rent, you know, you lose your your housing because you weren't able to pay your rent, then that then pretty soon you everything else kind of falls apart too. So it, what it really does is it stops that cycle before it starts. And has this been what sixteen years? Our uh, agency has been running for, for 16? sixteen years. Okay. We started in the year two thousand by a group of pastors and concerned citizens. Okay, now the the. Steel or the United Way g gives you funds, and it's, uh, the funds you get from United Way is it part of the budget that you do for absolutely, this? absolutely. Uh, the United Way funds two programs: transitional housing, which is our two-year program that allows people to get into an apartment. We cover the first month's rent, damage deposit, and an ongoing rental subsidy for a period mm -hmm. of up to two years, and provide case management as well. And then our eviction prevention program is the one-time assistance. So it's those two programs that United Way funds. Okay, so by giving to the United Way, you just give to one place and you're taking care of many. Right, exactly. This exactly. is a just for fun question, but I'll ask it to you first, Marcy. Um, what's your one big item you, if you could have right now you would want over there at the Boys and Girls Club? A playground. The okay. kids would love a playground. They would, okay. Mm -hmm. And what's the one big thing transitional housing could use right now? We could use funding to help people who are fleeing domestic violence. Uh, because that's the number one cause of homelessness among the population that we're serving right now. Right, right. So any type of support for any type of housing is, is greatly needed, but that is an area, a population area, that has great need. Right. And if they give to the uh, United Way, Will you, do they receive a report card then? Absolutely, okay. yes, yes, okay. on our progress. And we provide them with our data. Okay, mm -hmm. and then as far as the playground for the children, is that, uh, is, is a large number of your children that come to the, to the uh, club, is that, uh, children that would use a playground? How, yes. What are your numbers there? The majority of our kids are kindergarten through seventh grade. So okay. playground is necessary. Okay. And do you offer a snack program or anything as well there? We or? do. We've served, actually to this point in 2016, we've served 5,922 healthy meals and snacks. Wow. So. And so when do you offer the meals? I didn't know you did that. In the summer. We serve breakfast, okay. lunch, and then snack. Okay, great. Well, these are two wonderful, wonderful programs. So by helping the United Way, you're helping boys and girls and families, everyone. So it's a good, good thing to be. Wonderful. Well, thank you thank for you. supporting United Way. Thank you for coming. We will take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back. So please stay with us. Amy Swain Hearing Centers is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Dr. Amy Swain, and I want everyone to hear better. Hi, I'm Tim Anderson, the owner of Anytime Fitness, where we make getting healthy, affordable, and convenient. Anytime Fitness is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection. And it's that time in the program when I share what's going on in our community. The Steele County Humane Society will be having an Adopt a Highway Cleanup Day on Sunday, October 9th. 2016, rain or shine. We will meet at 8.30 a.m. at the Owatonna Business Incubator, 1065 Southwest 24th Avenue, Owatonna. Uh, there will be a short video to watch and then we'll go to work. If you have any questions, contact Allie at the Humane Society, 507-451-4512. The Owatonna Fire Department's Chili Feed and Wild Rice Soup will take place Sunday, October 9th uh, from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Owatonna Fire Department. Tickets are $6 in advance and $8 at the door. Five uh, and under are free, and proceeds go to the MDA and we all play. Owatonna Foundation Week is coming up October 10th through the 16th, Friday, the, uh, October 7th. Catch the Owatonna Foundation at the Huskies home football game. Wednesday, October uh, 12th is the Legacy Luncheon at the History Center. Thursday, October 13th is the Professionals Breakfast at the Owatonna Arts Center at 8 a.m. And Thursday, October 13th is the Wine and Beer Tasting at the Owatonna Holiday Inn and Suites, 6.30 to 9 p.m. And Saturday, October 15th is a Saturday morning coffee at the Owatonna Foundation office, 8 a.m. to 12 noon. And I'm sure this information is probably on their website as well. 
The next Living uh, Well with Chronic Conditions workshop offered begins Monday, October 17th, and will take place every Monday from 5.30 to 8 p.m. for six weeks at Coda Living Community, 2255 Northwest 30th Street, Owatonna. For more information or to enroll in the Living Well with Chronic Conditions workshop, call Linda Hoffman at 507-977-2171. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's programming, and we hope that you will join us on Monday when our guests will be Representative John Petersburg, who's the incumbent, and then um, uh, Bev Cashman and their candidates for uh, District 24A. So you'll want to tune in with us on Monday. And until then, have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Monday.